resurrection protects our faith. 1 Corinthians 15 says, And if Christ be not risen, if he's not risen from the grave, listen to this, then is our preaching vain, and your faith is also vain. If Christ is not risen, then is our preaching vain, and our faith is also vain. The resurrection protects our faith from being empty, worthless, of no value, See, believing, believing in him, that he is risen from the dead, that he is risen from the grave, it adds substance to our faith, and it affirms it, and it makes it real. People who say, well, it's not really that important that Jesus actually rose from the grave, eh, we have another problem. The problem is, is that if, he had been, if he's not risen, then, then our preaching's in vain, then what I'm doing now is worthless, and what you believe in is worthless. He has to have had come back from the grave. The tomb has to be empty. And this is exactly the reason why the world tries so hard to substantiate the fact that he didn't come back from the grave. Why they try to minimize the resurrection. Years ago, I've mentioned this a couple years ago, they mentioned uh, that they, they had this ossuary box with the name of Jesus inscription on it. And they said, here, look, here lies the bones of Jesus. Eh, wrong again. There are at least two people in this room named Brian. And on a good Sunday, there's going to be three or four. And you know what? Jesus was, uh, he was the only person who didn't, he, it's not like there was nobody named Jesus in that day. They found an ossuary box named Jesus, yes. But was it Jesus, the Christ, the, the, the man of Galilee? No, it wasn't. It couldn't have been because if it had been, if it had been, then guess what? My preaching's in vain and your faith is in vain. Then why are we here in church? Why are there any churches, any Christian churches in all of America? If Jesus is not risen from the grave, then our faith is in vain. So listen, not only, not only does it protect our faith because it does protect our faith it also gives us hope and it also proves that Jesus is God and without those components now the resurrection does a whole lot more than just those three things by the way these are just three things I gave you the resurrection is powerful and you know it's the only faith in the it's the only religion in the world that has a resurrected savior there's, there's not another religion out there that has, a, that has a risen Savior. And we sing this song. I serve a risen Savior. He's in the world today. Wow. How amazing is it to know that the God that we have in heaven is someone we communicate here with on earth. We, we, just, we, we talk to God in prayer, don't we? We ask him things. And we can tell the Lord that we love him. We can share our faith and not be ashamed. Right? We, we don't have to be ashamed of our faith. Every other religion has to be ashamed at least a little bit because their God is dead. They claim he's God, but wasn't God enough to raise himself from the dead. And we have a Savior that is risen and is in the world today. Now that's amazing. The resurrection is vital to the Christian faith. It's vital. Now I'm going to show you this. I want this hand right here to represent you and me, and I want this wallet to represent all of our sin. I'm going to show you how important the resurrection is. Here we are with all of our sin. I showed this to a guy the other day. I uh, met him in a garage, and his name was Bob, and I showed him this wallet illustration, just like I show you guys every Sunday. Here we are with our sin. The Bible says that we all have this sin. The Bible says that all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. The Bible says that there is not a just man upon the earth that doeth good and sinneth not. Everyone in this room is a sinner. Every single one of us. Me included. And the Bible says that we have a penalty that we have to pay for the sin. There's a, there's a wage. And the Bible says in, 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 uh, in Romans chapter 6, it says that the wages of sin is death. 
the wages of sin is death. Someone has to die for this sin. That's the problem right there. That's the problem because I, I, the only thing that I can offer is my life, and I'm going to be separated from God because if I have to pay for my sin in eternity, I'm not going to be in eternity with God. So where am I going to be in an eternity in hell? Because I cannot, with my sin, be in the presence of a holy God. It doesn't work that way. So I'm going to have to pay for my sin and be absent from God forever. That's the problem. The solution is what we call the good news. The solution is, is the good news that Jesus, 2,000 years ago, he came to this earth and he died on the cross. Now watch this, watch this. He died on the cross and he made the payment for your sin debt. Now this is the best part. Ready for this? He died and was buried. But now if he is dead and buried, he gives you something that means nothing. If he, if, if he is powerless to come back from the grave, what power does he have to impart to you righteousness? If he is dead in a grave somewhere, never coming back, what power, is, what power does he have? Is he even God? If he can't come back from the grave, he has promised you something he can't fulfill. You know what makes this all work? Is the resurrection. That he came back from the grave and he proved that he was in fact the sinless son of God. And that he had the power to be able to make a payment for your sin debt. See, there's a lot of churches, there's a lot of churches, this is what I told Bob yesterday, I said there's a lot of churches that tell you to turn over a new leaf. The problem is, is you still have the sin debt that has to be paid for. There's a lot of churches that say, um, that say if you get water baptized, you get water baptized. Some churches say if you give money to the church or if you walk an aisle, they have people come forward and they walk an aisle. Some people say that if you join a church, you become a church member. The problem is, is here you are with your sin. The Bible says that the wages of sin is death, not church membership, not walking an aisle or giving money or praying a prayer. The wages of sin is death. Someone has to die for your sin. 2,000 years ago, Jesus Christ died on the cross to pay for your sin debt. He was buried in a grave. And he rose three days later to prove that what he says about you and the faith that, or the, 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 the uh, gift that he gives you, which is salvation, is certain. And the Bible says this, the Bible says, for by grace are you saved through faith, not of yourselves, but it's a gift of God. It's not of works, lest any man should boast. Salvation is a gift received by faith. When you trust, depend, rely upon Jesus alone as your Savior, that's it. Salvation is not meant to be complicated. It's not meant to be tough. Salvation is simple.